All right. Welcome, everybody. Uh, we're back with a very exciting stream today. Um, we're going to be talking all about Doom OS 3, um, all the new features that are going to be coming out. Um, and, you know, I don't want to talk too much about it. We're, we're going to let um, our guests talk about it the most. Uh, we have Luke here, uh, the CEO of NetDuma, all the way from the beautiful United Kingdom. Um, so, Luke, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, uh, tell us what you do, so on and so forth. Sure, yeah. Well, first of all, thanks very much for having us on the stream. I don't think I've been on your stream for at least a couple of years. Uh, it's, been, it's been a long time. So really, really happy to be here. As you said, um, my name is Luke. I'm the CEO of NetDuma. So we obviously provide the software that you find on the Nighthawk Pro Gaming range. You know, I'll be honest, for the last like over a year, we've just been working really hard to get a big feature set out. And as often can happen, you kind of think of more on ideas and like, this is cool, this is cool. And we've just gone away and made everything that we think is really cool that people are going to want to use. And super excited because we're you know pretty much almost there at getting it out to everyone across the uh, the Nighthawk programming range. Yeah, um, you know, almost every single stream we do, we get a question: When's Zoom OS three coming out? And <laughs> we've had to keep our mouths shut, um, but we're so excited to talk about it. Um, but just so you guys know who all of us are, in case this is your first time tuning in, uh, I'm Alec. Uh, I'm an interactive media specialist at Netgear. I work on photos and graphics and video uh, for the website and for social. Um, and I am part of the No Lag crew. I'm a gamer myself. Um, ben took me under his wing. And, uh, you know, Ben's, Ben's, the, Ben's the realest gamer of us all, though. Ben, go ahead. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, Nighthawks out there. Uh, you, you know me. I'm Zardu Ben. I'm Ben Osvito. I'm the brand experience manager for Nighthawk Pro Gaming. It has been two years hasn't it oh over two years luke i remember our first stream that we did uh we we tried to you know via satellite you in and uh, uh i'll say that it was not nearly as smooth as as today so it's great to give uh, a second second chance always a pleasure to have you here always uh you know to talk about game gaming games um, and we're super, super stoked, super excited to announce. We've been kind of teasing for the last, I don't know, a month or so about some of the features in Duo OS. We haven't been able to get all of them out to you, but this is the first time you're going to hear about all the features that are coming in Duma 3.0, the beta, everything. Um, we're going to be answering some big questions. I know you guys are like... Uh, you know, just chomping at the bit to hear uh, what we have uh, to say in this, what was going to probably be a very, very short one hour. So um, let's, let's go back real quick. Luke, tell everybody if they don't know, what was the, the idea behind Duma? What got you, you know, so fed up with gaming that, that you wanted to come up with a solution that that really just fundamentally uh, cuts you know cuts through everything and just gets to the stuff that gamers need in in networking. Yeah, sure. So we're all gamers here, and that's obviously the roots of the companies is gaming. And it's a story I think familiar to many people who will be listening in. Our founder Ian basically lag rage so hard he started a company. That's the way I like to describe it. He was gaming. <laughs> He's playing Halo 2, Halo 3. This is way back in the day. You know, we're, we're obviously old, old games now. And people in his house, they'd start, say, uploading photos to Facebook from the previous night or torrenting some film that should be torrenting or whatever it was back in the day. Uh, it mainly just couldn't play Halo. And he got so annoyed at it, he was like, that's it. I'm going to figure out how to solve it. So he started looking, you know, he's a computer scientist, looked into how it could be solved, realized the answer was to put a solution on a router. And that was the that was the roots of the company, and you know, gradually added more and more functionality until we got to around 2014. And you know, Ian and I have been friends since university, and he just called me up and said, "Hey, man, I think, I think I've got it now. I think it's all working." And I said, "All right, well, let's let's launch it." Uh, so we launched it on our own little hardware, uh, and it did. It kind of blew our mind how well it did. You know, lag is such a universal problem. People all around the world uh, just hate lag, right? That's why we're all here. <laughs> Uh, so that did great. And then, you know, obviously you guys got in touch and the rest is history. We, we were able to bring our great software onto, you know, the best hardware in the business. And that's uh, that's how the Nighthawk Pro Gaming range began. 
Yeah, it, it really, you know, what, what really blew my mind is how well both of those pieces work together, uh, the hardware, the software. Uh, I, I have to say, when I first heard, I was a bit of a skeptic, and, but uh, seeing about 80 milliseconds drop off of my latency, uh, like, soon quickly changed. Uh, I went from being um, uh, a, a garbage DPS player in Overwatch to actually being, you know, fairly decent. And, and uh, it, it's literally changed all of my Call of Duty uh, games. Um, so now I don't have to play Overcooked all the time. But, uh, <laughs> but I go. could actually compete. But it, it really it really was a game changer. And as you know, when we first launched, uh, everybody was like, what? You know, and, and now two years later, you know, look at this. We got 35 people watching right now. We've got a bunch of questions, a bunch of people commenting uh, already. And, and it really kind of shows the power of, of this, uh, uh, this line of, of, of routers. We're really serious. It is, Absolutely. you know, we're, we're not screwing around. It is pro gaming stuff. Yeah. It's used by pro gamers. It's used by streamers. It's used by casual players that want to be able to, to you know it's it's hard enough to try to snipe in call of duty let alone snipe when you have you know terrible terrible lag and and we're all gamers we all hate lag um uh, and this is this is just i i really think that this is uh an evolutionary step forward in in solving those issues totally. um, yeah and we we're, we're just gonna keep improving that's the idea that's the great thing about software is that you can deliver improved feature sets to, to people that are in their home. And so I guess if you like, you know, the version that everyone has at home right now is, is like, this is a weird way of putting it, I guess, but the worst it will ever be, it's just gonna get better and better and better and better. And obviously that starts with 3.0, getting that guys out, like, getting that out to everyone and going from there. Totally, yeah. yeah. I think um, a big thing that I see, cause I wanna talk about like the features that are coming out. I think everybody is excited to hear about it. Um, a big thing that I see as I kind of look at our social media and um, kind of field um, thoughts from our followers is, um, you know, just plug in your device. And they think that that is, you know, the end all solution, hardwire everything. Um, obviously, there's a lot more to the software now today that does more than just, you know, the equivalent of plugging in your device. Like there's more to it than just plugging in. Um, what are those new features? Um, and, and how does it kind of add on to just plugging in? I mean, obviously plugging in is a good solution, but what else can you do with this new software? Well, yeah, so are we, are we into feature reviews? Go on, Ben, you go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'll, I'll kind of guide this a little bit. Um, so the first feature that we revealed was, was uh, geofencing. And I want to take a couple minutes to really kind of talk about, like, ge we have geo-filtering right now. The, here's geo, it's, it's, like, it's like the next, I hate to use this, but it's like the next level of geo-filtering. Not only, like, before where if you could draw the aperture and, and you can really kind of hone in to, to the servers near you, this new version, uh, geo-fencing, take it away, Luke. What's awesome about it? Sure. So just as a reminder, I'm sure most people watching will know what the geofiltering is, but you're playing online, you get put on a server or a host that's far away from your home. The connection is just way worse than something nearer to you. Um, so the geofiltering allows you to take control for the first time. You can block distant servers, guarantee the same servers each time game to game, which means you get a good connection and a consistent connection, which is way better for your gaming. Now, the geofiltering was one of our first ever uh, features. It's been out, you know, for five years now. But what we kept hearing from our community was, why can't I, why does it have to be the circle? Why can't I draw around the server regions I like? And the reason people want that, and, you know, experienced gamers will get this, is it's hard to explain, but just some server banks play better than others. So I know, like, a lot of the UK players of Call of Duty, for example, the French server plays better than the UK one at times. So say you want like the Irish server and the French server, but you're in the UK, there's no way of choosing each one and blocking out the UK one. Mm -hmm. So we're like, all right, let's go and fix this. So geofencing allows you to draw any shape you like, doesn't have to be a circle, and you can draw many different shapes, and they all create a filter 
each shape creates its own filter. So the idea would be, let's say, I don't know, you live on the east coast of the US, you love the server on, say, near New Jersey or whatever, you like a server in Florida, but everything in between sucks for you. You just draw f fencing around the two you like, and game to game, you'll get servers in either of those locations. The great thing about this is, obviously, you get more control over the servers than you had before, but it also means you probably find games even faster than you did before, because you don't have to, have to wait for that one server that you really want. So um, what, what, the bit I like the most from this feature is it's people really wanted it, and so it's very cool to be able to go and make it and then you know, give it out to everyone. Totally. Yeah, so I, I, for North America, I think it really solves the issue with like a lot of people, uh, gamers, especially in Texas, they're in between the East Coast servers and the West Coast servers. And sometimes it, there is a server like in Ohio, but uh, if you use the, just the, the regular filter, you're going you're gonna to hit some of those Virginia uh, servers. So this is, a, this is a great way that you can just draw you know, a circle around uh, the Ohio uh, servers, for example, for Fortnite, and, and not have to worry about getting connected to, to uh, Virginia. Yeah, totally. I, I think that that feature, I mean, we've got a bunch more features to go through, but that feature is so incredibly innovative, and I really love it. Um, I want to jump into a quick little video. It's 30 seconds, so we'll, we'll be back in like 30 seconds. Um, but just so you guys can kind of visualize it more, because I think seeing it really helps you understand the power of it. So um, we're going to jump over to the video. Um, we'll be back in about 30 seconds. Oh, you can, you can they can still hear us, <laughs> so we can keep talking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Ready? Let's go. Cool. So as you can see here, we are selecting uh, Oregon, I think, <laughs> and the East Coast. So, you know, if there's servers in these areas that you really want, but you don't want anything in the middle, let's say you don't want Arizona, you can selectively pick these, these areas, um, which is super powerful um, for, for all the reasons we just mentioned. Really, really powerful. Um, it's probably what that's my favorite new feature personally we've got a lot more to go through but i think that one's the best i love that one um but let's not stop there um we've got so tons more to go through um yeah tell we, us we, a little bit about uh benchmarking yeah so connection benchmarking is a speed test on steroids that's the best way of describing it i think so i think nearly anyone listening on this will have used speed tests at some point you just want to know your speeds what we realize is, A, that everyone was doing that, because if you're someone who cares about your connection, you, you'll have speed tested regularly. The trouble with speed testing from, say, uh, like a normal speed test, is you're testing the speed of your device to the router and then over the internet to the speed test server. You're not actually testing your core line, because you say you have a wireless interference between you and your router or there's something else, uh, possibly on your, on your actual device that could be slowing things down. The cool thing about having it on the router is you're running a pure test of your line. Now, why is that important? Is because if you're a gamer, you know, obviously it's clear here, stable line is very important to your overall experience. So we originally we put in the speed test part. We're like, well, wait a minute, why don't we put in a ping test? We put in a ping test, we added that. And we're like, well, wait a minute, why don't we like see how good it performs under um, congestion? Because what, your line may be able to handle congestion way better than, say, another person's line. And it's good to know, like, so we, we're calling it like a performance under bloat or like ping under bloat. So we added that in as well. So that's the current iteration. What we're going to do next, and this is where the benchmarking phrase comes in, is it's like, okay, I've got these results, but what do they really mean? Are they good? Are they bad? So where we're going to go next with it is, it, it, you know, becoming as an upgrade, like an enhancement to the feature set, is you can compare your results to, say, other Doom OS or other Nighthawk Pro Gaming users. And it'll say, look, your speed, it gets an A rating. Uh, and compared to other users, you know, your speeds are better than like 83% of other people. Or well, probably more interesting one would be ping. Your ping's way better than others or it's way worse. So you just get an idea of how good your line is. So when you, you know, when you get wrecked by your friend online, you can just say, well, it's not my fault, it's my connection. Yeah, that type of thing. There you go. Um, yeah. the, I think it's, it, it's super powerful because uh, it, it allows you to... The, the great thing that has always been built into this is not only do you have great features that allow you to do cool things like geofiltering and, 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 and pinging servers and that sort, 
but you also now have the tools to actually compare, benchmark, make those comparisons, make those those changes uh, on the fly, make those decisions to make your your gaming better. I know that things change as as you go, especially if you're a streamer. Um, you know, I, I've made adjustments on the fly to allow you know more uh, pipe to my streaming computer, so that way I can get a better bit rate. Uh, these are just awesome, awesome tools that just make everything that you already have uh, work better. And that brings us up to application QoS, which I, I think is is a, a killer feature. Uh, Luke, do you, you want to give the, sure, the, yeah. so the again, description on that? Yeah, absolutely, Ben. Yeah, so again, feedback driven. We've always had the ability to allocate bandwidth to your favorite devices, uh, but that could, you know, that, that's what's great, obviously. So you say my Xbox gets the most bandwidth and say my sister who's watching Netflix, she can have less bandwidth. That way you can always guarantee you have enough uh, bandwidth for your for your gaming device. But what we were seeing, obviously, is you get multiple devices in the household that are gaming and or multiple devices in the household that are streaming or whatever it is. So we thought, well, let's flip it the other way and we'll do it via application categories. So we have something really powerful in DMRS called DPI, which I won't get technical, but basically the router is able to see the types of traffic going through it. It can see if it's a Netflix streaming uh, type of traffic. It can see if it's gaming or whatever it is. It can see it's like a Zoom call. It can see it's just web browsing. So rather than having to get into all the detail on all devices, it's just a way easier way of just prioritizing what matters the most to you. So in my home, the first thing I did, I just, I just went gaming, 100% done, because there's nothing else There's nothing else that matters to me, right? And of course, the way it works is it doesn't mean gaming uh, will always have 100% and nothing else can use the internet when gaming's not using that. It will immediately share any unused bandwidth. So you don't screw your whole household over. You're just making absolutely sure that what matters the most to you gets the bandwidth it needs in a really simple way. Yeah, and I, I actually think that the, the new application, QoS, really simplifies the whole the whole process of getting, um, you know, those those things that you want prioritized, prioritized. I mean, it, it was easy before, and and I, I, I've always said that that the the dashboard really takes the alchemy of setting up your router out of it, you know, because you're no longer trying to spin lead into gold, trying to figure out, you know, which port do I need to open or which one I need to forward. Uh, it really kind of takes all that mysticism out of it, and you just get down to, okay, I want to prioritize my gaming, I want to prioritize this device, and I want to prioritize this game. Yeah, I, uh, I completely agree. I think a, a big, a big um, solution, like what this solves in so many ways is when you add more devices to your network. So let's say, you know, before we're all sheltering in place, I have a friend come over, they put their phone on my Wi-Fi, then that gets kind of added into the previous device QoS, and, you know, if, if I want to be diligent and go in and really manage that well, um, I can achieve a similar um, outcome as with application QoS. But application QoS just takes care of all of that. Um, I think it really adds kind of a smart aspect to the router, um, at least in that hey, regard. Can, 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 uh, you're totally agree. Can we just do a mini feature reveal? This is yeah. like a minor feature, which we haven't announced, but I know it's going to make people happy. We finally <laughs> added a button that deletes all offline devices. Oh, my God. So yeah. I needed that. Thank you, Luke. <laughs> yeah. I really needed so, that. I, yeah. It's, it's I, I don't, I, I'm speechless. I don't even have words to describe <laughs> this because if you look at my network manager, I have a giant tree of, of devices <laughs> that aren't online, that I don't exist anymore, that, you know, uh, and, and pruning that tree has always been a, a bit of a hassle. I, I just want to say that to me, like that's that, that should be that the grand finale. It should be the grand finale. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just, it, it's such go. a small thing, but it's, it's such a it's such a big thing. Um, and then, so a lot of people are out there having a question, and and we'll, we'll take a couple of questions. Uh, I know we're running just a little bit behind. We might go a little bit over just to get you know some of these questions out. But uh, one of the, the the questions is is where do I sign up? Where do I sign up for the beta test? When is the beta test? Um, so if you if you scroll down a little bit in the description, we've got a link to learn about Duma OS 3.0, but that's where you're going to be able to sign up for the, the beta. Um, and um, 
when are we doing this, Luke? When are we doing it, Ben? Oh. Uh, when's sign, when sign up beginning? I mean. Yeah, sign up is now. Exactly, right. Yeah, and, uh, I have the website open for everybody to open. see. If you scroll to the bottom, you can uh, you can sign up. So, uh, yeah, you know, if you've got an I, uh, XR product, check it out. Um, I, I do want to address a question kind of as a follow-up, though. Um, we did have uh, – it was, it was a question from uh, Zachary Palmer. Um, who appears, based off of some of his, of his other comments, to not have an XR router or an R1. Um, so just to clarify, Zach, um, these, this software is only available on our gaming line and on the R1, um, which is the NetDuma product. Um, but That is true. Yeah, yeah. Um, but his question, kind of above all of that, is are there any major advantages to this for non-gamers? Yeah, I think, and there, there's some of the features we'll talk about in a bit will also be non-gaming as well, help everyone. Mm -hmm. I think the words we see from a lot of people who aren't gamers but buy this product is because you have a lot of control and a lot of visibility over your network, which you don't usually see on other software. Like router software in general is either very advanced or kind of very light touch. There's not much there. Mm -hmm. So, for example, in the current version of the Nighthawk Pro Gaming uh, router range, you can see all the devices that connect to your network. You can block them. You can see how much traffic they're all using. You can prioritize whatever matters the most in your home. It doesn't have to be gaming. So, like, I'm hearing a lot now that a lot of people are using it to give more bandwidth when they're on, say, an important work call. Like, mm -hmm. right now, like, they give more bandwidth to Zoom and deprioritize whatever else has been used in the home. So there's a lot of uses there. The cool thing as well is, we're, you know, we're hearing from, like, non-gamers what they want. And we're building out more features as well. So there's a lot more coming. And if you stay on for the rest of the stream, we'll reveal another feature that hasn't been publicly announced at all yet, which is coming to the range, which I think will be really great for non-gamers. Yeah, I, I, I think there's a lot of advantages for, for non-gamers. Uh, just the ability to have control over your local network and just not only having the, uh, the ability to control, but the ability to look and see what is a being a, a bandwidth hog or a bandwidth vi uh, uh, like a vampire, you'd be surprised at how many of those little streaming devices that you plug into your TV that, you know, when you pop it on and it's got that that cool uh, new either Disney Plus or uh, Netflix uh, trailer just ready to go. That's because it's constantly on the internet, and so with, as uh, Internet of Things grows. A lot of those things are, 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 are just ready to go, and, and they're always in constant uh, connection. And because of that, th th those are going to like vamp a little bits of your bandwidth here and there. And you'd be surprised. At, like you know, Those things stack up pretty quick. Uh, Roku TVs. Um, mm -hmm. And just being able to see what is uh, going on in my network, what I can do to make adjustments to the network, and... And, and then being able to, to control that with, uh, with just a, a couple of sliders, a couple of, of clicks here and there, uh, is super powerful. It's, 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 uh, I've never been able to do that in any other router um, previously without like some sort of advanced networking degree. Totally. Um, so chat is blowing up right now, so we'll try to keep up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for your comments. We, we really appreciate having an active chat. Uh, that's a good thing, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I want to try to hit all your uh, your questions here. Um, uh, this one isn't so much a question, but it's a comment that I think we should we should address uh, because it's something that I've um, you know heard a lot at um, I heard this a lot at PAX um, from owners of the XR products. This was a complaint, and I think we mentioned a solution on stream. Um, Sean cannot go to private lobbies and party chats. Um, when he has the um, geo filter on a certain range. Um, and I think what's really a big thing with the geo fencing is it's a solution. Um, you can fence off the Microsoft server nearest to you um, if you're using party chat on Xbox, for example. And then you can still access or parties. Or PlayStation. Or PlayStation, yeah. exactly. Um, you can still access party chat um, while still using the power of geofencing to, um, you know, selectively choose different servers. Um, is that a use case that you guys had thought about, um, Luke, when you were doing yeah, it? Yeah, it is. I mean, 
what I'd say is if you could have the time, if they could go on our forum, so forum.netduma.com, let us know about that problem because out of the box we automatically white we don't sorry, we have whitelist all these servers that shouldn't be blocked. What happens though is Microsoft or, or Sony or whoever, they add servers and it's region by region as well. Mm-hmm. So we sometimes we have to manually add them. So what I think's happened here is wherever the question questioner lives, in that area there must be a server bank that we need to whitelist. It's very easy okay. if they're able to click on that server it should be on their map. If they see it and they're like, there it is, click on it, give us the ID and we'll have it sorted for you. And we can send that out over the air as an update and, and solve that problem once and for all. Oh, I, I didn't even know that yeah. you guys were doing that. That's that's awesome. Um, cool. Yeah, so, so most people won't have that problem, but it, it, obviously, you know, every now and again it can happen. Like I said, it depends where you live. Yeah, so we can that yeah. And it also, it also depends on, you know, uh, the ever-changing, you know, uh, environment of, of server banks. Um, I know that, Luke, your team does a really good job at trying to chase those down, but a lot of times you guys are you guys are always out on the lookout. Um, and it's also it's super helpful if you guys, the fans and the audience and the users, you know, if you see something like that, like uh, like Luke said, you know, flag it, tag it, and uh, we'll get it get it in. Uh, it, it makes uh, on this side a little bit easier if you and you guys are seeing it. Um, and it also helps out, you know, who knows, you, you, you might be helping out a couple of your friends across town. Yeah, just one real quick thing, as just as a quick workaround pre-geofencing being out, if you just set your filter range to the whole world or just change it to spectating mode, whichever is easier, join the party chat, then put your filter all back on because the filter will never kick you out or should never kick you out of an active connection. So once you've got the party chat going, you can put the filter back on and it won't get blocked. I didn't know that. Well, there you go. That that's why we run there you go. <laughs> that's why. That's why. <laughs> that's, that's that's where it's your price of admission right there. <laughs> cool. Um, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I don't think there's any other pressing questions right now. So many of the questions revolve around how to get onto the beta. We told you guys how. Go into the description, sign up, and then that's the first time. Yeah. That's the first time that's been announced. By the way, that the beta sign up is open. So I think everyone who's tuned into the stream deserves to get. Uh, like first dibs on signing first up. First dibs on signing up. Like yeah. uh, we're gonna see how initial reaction is, and and we'll we'll let you know, you know, uh, whether or not it's uh, you've you you've made it to the closed beta uh, before we would be open it up uh, uh, big. But this is the first place you're hearing it now, worldwide right now, uh, and and so. Uh, you know, yes, yeah, sign up because the sooner the the lower you are on the list, the better your chances are of getting in. There you go. Um, I'm, I'm I haven't even signed up yet. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I haven't right either. <laughs> I should I should be signing up as well uh, because uh, I definitely would love uh, some of the the these new features uh, right now. And one of the ones like I, I hinted at, I'm a, a that I've used a lot. But let's talk about like uh, changes to the dashboard and how. Uh, 3.0 is going to allow you to get the most information out of your network and how you can then apply that information. Yeah, I mean, so what do you want to go through exactly? The dashboard or just some of the other features that are coming? Some of the other features that, that give you more information. Yeah, so one one feature we're really excited about is Ping Heat Map. Uh, so we revealed that with you guys a few weeks back. The idea of Ping Heat Map is that when you play a game online, particularly console games, but I think modern PC games also have this, you can't see where all the servers are. You kind of eventually discover where most of them are near your home because you get put on them you know, regularly enough and you have the geability to see them. But if you don't have a Nighthawk programming router, you're not going to know. And even when you do, there's no easy way to see them. So what you can do with Ping Heatmap is ping from your home every active server that's being used, well, every kind of server bank, I should say, every dedicated server bank for that game. So, for example, Warzone, you could ping all the Warzone servers. It gives you a color-coded result, and that allows you to see which one's going to give you the best ping. Because it may not always be the one that's at the absolute closest to you, or there may be some closer you never even realized that were there. And right. then you set the geofilter up around those servers that you want the most. And what's what I really like about it is that it, because it is a pure ping test from your router, again, you're getting a really good idea of how your connection will play on these different games. One thing to add is we're building out uh, how many games you can ping on there. There's just a handful at the moment to kind of get ready for beta, but 
when new games come out, so like Valorant launches or whatever, we can add that to the ping heat map. And then, you know, you don't need to get a firmware update for that. It will just be an option for you to keep pinging. So in two years' time, like whatever the next big game is, that will be on ping heat map. You can find the best servers for you and then set your geofilter up to make sure you get them. Yeah, and I think what's yeah. really awesome about, um, you know, not just NetDuma, or not just Duma OS, but NetDuma as a company, is you guys are really active um, with with the community. So, you know, you mentioned earlier, if you have an issue with party chat, let us know. If there's a game coming out that you want, you know, um, adapted to our routers, let us know. And I think that that needs to be broadcast, um, especially to those in our chat, you know. Let us know and let Luke know um, what adjustments you want to see. And um, it can happen, you know. I know that, you know, Netgear is a big company and, you know, it might seem like you're just getting kind of thrown into the void, but you're not. We're here listening to you. And, uh, yeah, you know, it, it's really exciting to uh, be a part of um, the owner's club, to be part of the No Lag crew because uh, you're not just buying a product. You, you, you get that experience of being a part of our community. So, um, yeah, I think I'm really glad you mentioned that, Alec, but I think I think there's like an elephant in the room, which is and I really empathize with this is like, hey, it's been over a year since we last had a firmware update. We've been waiting so cool features are coming out, but you know, is this always going to be a year or what? What I'm really excited to say is that no, the, we put a lot of work into the infrastructure here to make it really easy to get out new features. And a big kind of core part of that is, and I don't think we've announced it properly yet, is the router app store. We've, we've hinted at it, but it's coming in, in this upgrade. So the router app store is a really simple concept. It's the same as an app store on your phone. There are new router apps or router apps, sorry, using American accent today, uh, the new router apps are there for you to download onto your hardware. Now, what's really great about that is that we can get new features and new enhancements out much faster than ever before. So we've got a whole, I won't get technical, but we've got the whole system all set up now. So from now on, you know, we hear a cool idea and we think it's, you know, straightforward enough. We'll get it made, get it tested, and it'll appear on the router app store and you can download it straight onto your router. And that will really pick up the pace and speed a bit. And I'm not over committing here because we put in all the infrastructure now to make sure we get updates out much quicker. And I, 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 I hear people are frustrated. And you know what? I'm actually kind of, um, it's, it's nice to hear that feedback because it means people want more and people are frustrated. There's not more already. So that means there's a real hunger for it. And we just got to make sure at NetDuma that we, we keep bringing up things that people want. So that's why, like you said, Alec, you tell us what you want and we'll go away and make it for sure and we'll get it out to you. So, so yeah, there's there's a couple questions uh, that I just want to clear up. Um, uh, let's see uh, about the beta. One is, you know, this is a, a sign up uh, for the beta right now, um, and you can uh, sign up. We're going to be announcing very soon uh, when uh, the beta is is going to go live. You'll be able to test. Uh, all the the Duma 3.0 features um, in a in a beta forum, and then after that, after we kind of work out through the the beta, then it's going to go out live. To uh, we're going to roll it out to the the different um, uh, XR communities. Uh, correct, Lou. Correct. So we're going to start with the 500, uh, and then we'll start uh, rolling it out from from there. Uh, and, and the thing is, is that the advantage of you guys signing up for the beta is that you guys can can help us, really help us hone these in, get these these uh, features like really singing. And, and, and if you have suggestions, like like Luke just said, you know, uh, you know, it could be a feature, it could come up in in the R app, uh, uh, you know, down the road. Uh, and then the next is. Uh, here's here's a question. Themes. Are we, are, are we going to be doing stuff with themes? We are going to do stuff with themes. Yeah, we've teased that for a while. I realized that. Yeah. So that will be through the router app store. So we can have people really want a dark theme. People really want a light theme. We've actually made both of those. So now it's just a case of getting them onto the store and then letting people download them onto their. So a reskin. You're in, just to be clear, people are not know what we mean by themes. You reskin your interface. And I think, uh, yeah, going forward, I think we're going to have a bit of fun with themes. Like, we keep joking, we'll make a Christmas theme, for example, so we could do something like that. But, um, yeah, just just whatever you guys want to see on themes, let us know. We can we can play around with it. Now, now uh, here, here's, here's another 
uh, a question on themes uh, down the road. Are there any plans for like a, a like to either a release the uh, specs for the for the themes or to have an editor of, of sorts? We, we've got the editor. Yeah, exactly. We have the editor in our roadmap. So that will be coming in the future. I just don't know which release, but or when it'll be on the app store. But yeah, we definitely want to do that. Because I think people want to mess around with it, which just sounds pretty fun. Just don't yeah. set everything to all white or all black, because then you're screwed. But, uh, right, yeah. then you can't find anything. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, and, it's, and, it's cool, I so, so going back, uh, so you got the ping heat map. Uh, what, other, what other great features? Uh, we talked about themes. Uh, what other things are, are, are coming? And should we should we announce um, should we announce a new feature that hasn't yeah. been publicly not fully anyway? So we've developed an ad blocker. Now ad blocker is something I'm sure everyone gets right. They've probably got one on their browser. You know, a lot of people have it on their browser. Ad blocker is obviously very powerful for for blocking ads when you're web browsing. The trouble with having it on your browser is it's just on that one browser. It's not on everything else on your PC. It's not on every other device in your home. You have to go one by one and add them all. And there are some things that are just out of reach from a conventional ad blocker. So you can't, for example, block ads that appear on your smart TV if you're using the web on there or, or YouTube or whatever. You can't use it uh, on in within apps on your phone. You won't be able to block ads on there. So if you can get an ad blocker centralized on your network where all the traffic is coming in and out of it, you can start blocking ads across everything. And that's what the ad blocker will do on the Nighthawk Pro Gaming range. So it will have a default list, and that default list has been populated by like, a huge community that's out there that try and track common ad domains that are, cause issues, the, the, sorry, create ads. And also not just ads, actually, telemetry, so things that track your usage and things like that. All of these are in this massive list. That will be there by default. It'll be disabled by default, so if you don't want to touch it, that's completely fine. You can then enable it, and bang, every device that's going through the router will be uh, have their ads blocked. Uh, the cool thing as well is, you know, you can't catch everything. So if there is something you're seeing that's annoying, it will appear as like, hey, this has been allowed through, or this you know, this has just been let, let in. You can then take those domains and put them into your own manual list and block them as well. So you've got complete control. And you know, sometimes you go on a website, it says, hey, we detect an ad blocker. There's an easy pause button. You can just freeze it for like the next five minutes and make sure it stops so you can, well, until you finish on that website. Now that, right. that feature where, and that's a really big feature because, um, you know, I know this gaming and non-gamers alike, I think, just get sick of these types of ads that affect your experience when you're trying to do things. So we're really excited to get that one out. Yeah, and and then, I mean, when I read about that, um, sorry, Ben. Um, no, no, no. When I read ahead. about that, um, I thought back to when I first uh, switched to iPhone. So I switched to iPhone like a couple of years back, and on my Android, I had like really tinkered with it to get an ad blocker. Um, and you can't do that on iPhone. So every time I download like a free app, I'm getting ads. Um, so for everybody who's like a mobile gamer, um, you know, if you're you're not gaming on Android and you're gaming on iPhone, um, you can. There's no other way to do it. That this is the only way, really. I mean, at least that I'm aware of is um, with the solution that you've created, uh, Luke, which is really exciting. Or even if you're an Android mobile gamer and you don't want to go in and like root your Android and like do all this, you know, kind of scary stuff with your phone <laughs> um, um this is a great solution i really i really think um i'm excited for it personally i don't like ads so alec, alec if we have time yeah. um we had quite a lot of fun with the interface because like in the original design stage we're like well you know it's an ad blocker we should just simply display the domains and we're like no wait a minute we can have some fun here so if you've got time show the video so people can see what yeah, it's going to look like let me uh I'll hop yeah into that let's, right now. let's go ahead and roll that 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 video and just a quick uh uh we, we had a comment quick comment on you know you're rolling it out on the 500 first why why did i buy the 700 well one you bought the 700 because it's like the most powerful uh router that we have out there but uh but two um luke when when do you foresee after after this uh, we're going to be, you know, or when's it look like we're we're looking at the seven hundred? Seven hundred should be really, really close behind. I mean, it may even be the same time, but very, yeah. very close. Yeah, yeah. That that was my understanding. I just didn't want to overpromise, but yeah, uh, look at this on, on the ad blocker. This is just like super cool. I love the way you visualized 
the blocked ads. I think it's really cool with that, like the different size circles. Yeah, it's, it's quite fun actually. Just checking it. You, you don't realize. I won't name the websites because obviously on stream, but there's sorry the companies, but there's some that just track a lot of what you're doing. So it's quite it's kind of intriguing seeing that come out. Yeah, yeah, and that and, can and, obviously now be blocked. Yeah, and 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 you know, gamers and non-gamers. It's all you know. It's about. It's about controlling your your online presence, and it's about controlling your your privacy, you know. And that's something that is uh, uh, everybody is really uh, uh, keen on, you know. Um, it, it's it's the big thing. So um, being able to have that control is is really fantastic. Yeah. And it is just literally click a button. You don't need to be tech savvy to get this to work. Totally, I, I, I'm a huge fan. Um, and I know that we got a comment earlier that was like, you know, what is the use case for people that aren't gamers? I think this is a huge one, right? Um, yeah. I think that this is something, I mean, the number one app on the Google, like, Chrome store is Adblocker. Everybody wants this, yeah. right? And this is a way to bring it to your entire network. And I don't think anybody's ever done this before, so I think it's a really, really cool solution. Um, and I, I love... Not in this way, yeah. It. That's the thing, not the, the way we have done this, so using these online lists is, you won't have found that on a router before, not to my knowledge anyway. You sometimes get something called like using DNS, but it's not very powerful and it's, you don't really have any ability to configure it and manage it. So yeah, this is like over super powered app blocker. Yeah. Well, and I think this is kind of just a general theme um, for these products is, you know, um, you can go in really deep onto any router and do QoS, but you need a software engineering degree to figure that out. Like it, it's really hard. You've taken all these features and brought them into this really intuitive software. I mean, just that ad blocker thing. I mean, that looks like something from like r slash data is beautiful. Like that's that's a sick <laughs> looking system, right? <laughs> I mean, um, Thanks, yeah. and and it's I could do it. I I am not very savvy with anything except for Photoshop. <laughs> so, you know, to have people like me be able to do that. Um, it's great. It's a great solution. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. And so, then, uh, um, go ahead, Ben. Oh, I was just going to say that. Uh, uh, I, I, let's roll the video on on the on the um, on the R apps. Yeah, that video is a little long. Uh, uh, we need to edit that one down. So maybe, yeah, maybe just we can, we can talk about it. it yeah, he's like pause after a minute, or whatever. But yeah, like like I was saying, the concept's really simple. Uh, but you can now install. So all the 3.0 features, you can uninstall if you so wish. If it's not for you, that's totally fine. So you can pick and choose the features that matter the most. I mean, personally, I'd say just install them all. They won't do any harm, right? Just having them on there and you can use them when you wish. But that's the concept that we're bringing out here that you can add and remove very easily. And if you extrapolate that going forward, that means new features can be delivered to you much more easily than ever before. And that's where we're going. Like we. We know people want new features. People are really hungry for it. We're not deaf. We think the same anyway, right? We, you know, we're just like these, like our users. We're, we're gamers, and we want more stuff. We want more functionality. So, the cool thing is, we can make it and get it out really easily. Yeah, and 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 then that goes back to to the fact that we haven't been ignoring uh, the fans and the audience out there uh, about like updating a, a new firmware. What what really has been happening uh, behind the scenes, and and we we've been a bit mum about it, is that you know three O is really kind of a re no, I wouldn't say a rebuild, but a, it really is uh, a there's a lot of stuff that is underlying three O that is going to make updates easier. Uh, that's going to make you know just adding new features easier, and it's really going to make the future a lot brighter for uh, Duma OS, Nighthawk Pro Gaming. Uh, it, it it just there was a lot of heavy lifting that had to be be, be done because you have to like uh, just organize. It, it, it it's like it's like reorganizing the multi-purpose room or your basement, you know. There, we are clearing. We we now are getting out of the. It looks like a pile of rubble stage, and and where now everything's all organized. It looks beautiful. Uh, it it it. It's going to be. 
way better in, into the future. Would you say that that's a correct assumption? Yeah, and you can delete all offline devices. So, I mean, <laughs> and then do you the have that important feature <laughs> of all? <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's that's really well put. And that's where we're going for sure. That's where we want. That's where we wanted to be, and that's where we now are. Once this is out, so yeah, full yeah, ahead it, for sure. it just. It took us a little while to get here, and we really do appreciate your guys' yes, patience yes. because you've asked us like several times, and, and you know we've been kind of coy and kind of mum, you know, saying, well, you know, Ooh, maybe soon, maybe, you know, and, and you guys have 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 not, you know, stormed the you know the castle with pitchforks and 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 torches, you know, while we're trying to get this creation out there, but now it's alive. That's. I yeah, think we, we really that we rounds really out my, my my Frankenstein um, uh, analogy. So uh, I don't even know where I'm going with that. There you go. So let's just move on. To <laughs> let's move next. on. Um, I think we uh, we should go into. Uh, we've got a couple other things on the list here, um, but I think what's most important of, for the stream is is features. So um, we've hit a lot. Yeah. But there are a lot. So what else? What else have we got that we haven't uh, mentioned yeah, I yet? Think, I think the one left to announce today is also this hasn't been announced anywhere. Is what we're calling traffic controller. So the idea of traffic controller. This is non-gaming again, right? But get, will help gamers too. We've always had the ability to block devices, but what we were hearing is, you know, like I'd like to be able to put that on a schedule, for example. So like a common example would be. It's meal time. I don't want my kids on their phones or their tablets or whatever. They should be engaging with us as parents, or they should be doing their, their homework or schoolwork, whatever you guys call it in America. <laughs> you know, they should be doing that, right? So there's no more no more uh, procrastinating. Get down to work. So you can easily freeze devices using this traffic controller. Another example is again, we've got into the detail. If so if you want to get details, so you could, for example, take a smart home device. This is quite technical here, but some of the guys watching will understand this. Take a smart home device. You know that it only communicates using a certain number of ports or even just one port. You can block every other port that that device could possibly use. So that prevents, you know, that reduces the chance of like a malicious attack coming in and uh, gives you a secure home. So, yeah, the whole, I should really summarize this a bit clearer. It's like a firewall. That's what traffic controller is. You can choose what to block and what not to block. You can do that by device, you can do that by type of application. So, uh, or you could do that by specific uh, application itself. So I'll give you another example to make that make more sense. Let's say you've got the family PC and you want your kids to use it to do their schoolwork. You don't want them gaming. Put the gaming temporarily into blocks for the next two hours and then they can carry on and use the rest of the computer and you know they're not going to be using games during that time. That's what we're trying to get to there. And what, what we say about traffic control is it's, it's like the beginning so, I mean, I don't want to overpromise of what's coming next, but I think people can see that this could, is like the root of many different features you can make from it. So, again, with that one, let us know what you guys think of it and let us know what you want to see next, and we'll, we'll go away and make it. Yeah, we, uh, yeah. let's, let's uh, keep chatting about features, but we have a commenter who really wants to watch the Connection Benchmark video, so I'll, I'll, play, that. I'll play that for him so he can... Uh, yeah, go for it. He can watch that as yeah, we as we continue our conversation. But um, I I I love that idea. Um, it it just seems that all of these features are just giving you so much control over your network, Absolutely. and it's not like they're like it's control in different ways. It's not just like you know, obviously you improved things, but it's not just like you right. are only focused on like you know only geofencing. You know, it's there's more and more added on to it and different aspects of the control that you're gaining um, with this update, which I think is awesome. Um, and not only that, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you made it easy because um, this is stuff that I would not know how to do. I don't think anybody would know how to do um, that isn't, you know, a software engineer um, or, or a certified network, you know, um, installer or something like that. I, I don't know. Um, but the the it looks it it looks it looks easy because it is easy and it just it like I said it takes all that mysticism and 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 voodoo out of it you know it just it breaks it down just to like I can see what I'm doing I can make those settings before it was you know uh, advanced settings was a array of of numbers that didn't mean anything to me exactly and like you know how do I know which port to open there's like 
nine thousand ports or some you know goofy number like that. I don't know, but uh, but it, I was being completely lost, and it just it, this this package just makes everything so much easier. Now here's a here's a question: um, Are there any options for DDoS defense, Luke? Uh, we have the current solution, which is called Hybrid VPN. So there's no way a, a normal router could prevent an actual DDoS attack from when it's hitting you. I mean, like even Amazon themselves struggle with that, right? Like, and they've got the most servers in the world. So your little router and its home and your own line will never be able to prevent a DDoS attack when it's started. What mm -hmm. you can do, though, is stop an attacker getting your IP address. That's how you prevent it. So hi, we, you know, you get this, you know, it's in many places you can get an idea of this VPN. So if people don't know what that is. You effectively route your traffic through another location, and that's what is visible to the internet. So if someone can somehow get your IP address, what they will do is attack the VPN server, not yours. So your internet stays up, your home stays up. You just have to flick to a different VPN server. That's a way of protecting your home. But when we designed that feature, what we were hearing is like, cool, but the trouble is, they're getting the same IP address from something like Skype, but I'm having to put all my gaming traffic through the VPN as well, and a VPN usually is slower uh, right. and maybe is more congested, so my gaming experience is worse. So we're like, all right, well, why don't we let people choose what to put through the VPN, whether that's the device or the application, and, and, and choose what's not going through the VPN. So with our hybrid VPN, hybrid VPN solution, you could say, gaming PC, I want everything on it to go through the VPN except games. So that means my gaming will be seeing this like normal. It's not going through VPN. Everything else that could be found in my IP address can't be detected. And, that, and that's how you can prevent DDoS attacks using the products. Yeah. And the good news is, uh, how long do we have to wait for, for hybrid VPN, Luke? Well, that's that's out on the 500. Uh -huh. I know. That was my... Oh, good, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you already have... Uh, that ability uh, right now. Um, so hybrid VPN, it's something that we had been talking about, uh, I think, summer last year. So, uh, but uh, there should be on the community forums um, uh, a little bit about it and how to how it works. But it, it's super, it's super great, and it and it works with any VPN that you have. Correct, Luke? That's right. I was going to make that point. So any open VPN provider, most of them are you can use. You have to get something called a config file, put it in. Now that all sounds a little bit more complicated. So if you want a much simpler option, there's two preset um, setups for two different VPN providers that are on there. So there's a basic mode if you don't really aren't feeling too confident. You just have to sign up to one of those. If you know what you're doing, if you already have a VPN provider or you, you're keen to get one and you know how to do this, it's not that hard. You just put a text file in the, in the router and away you go. Yeah. And then... Um Oh gosh, uh, Dynaminus, who has been on our uh, tech uh, streams on Friday, had a question: uh, Can you make a feature a geo filter that detects a server with the lowest ping? And uh, somebody answered, uh, uh, "Ping Assist uh, would do that." He replied, yeah. "It it doesn't always work. It, it also finds different servers. That's because uh, that ping rate is dynamic. Correct." Yeah, so the way I'd recommend this user uses ping assist is there's a bit of a trick here. But put yourself, put your home location in the ocean, or when you have geofencing, just do like one little area in like the Antarctica, like somewhere where there is no gamer. So that basically just means you're blocking everything. Then set your ping assist to what your threshold is. Let's say it's really low, like 25 ms. If you can get one server that usually blow 25 ms, put that on your ping assist and start searching. That should mean you only get connections below 25 ms. Every now and again, you might not because uh, when you first ping the server, that's when it all decided to allow it or not. And if it's below 25, then it creeps up a bit. That that can occasionally happen, so that might be what they're referring to there. And that's the dynamic point you made, Ben. Uh, but mm -hmm. most of the time, that's really good. One thing we're going to do, uh, it's not in 3.0, but we'll definitely add this, is we're going to allow you to set a, like a min and max on ping assist because some people want that. Like They don't want to ping too low. They want it above a certain level. So... We're, we're going to work on that for sure and get that in the future. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're winding down to the top of the hour, uh, but uh, I know that a few people just joined, so I'll try to allow you guys to get some questions in. Here's a question for Luke. Will application QoS be replacing anti-buffer bloat? 
since you have control of the limit of the bandwidth of each application that devices uh, are using on the network? Really good question. So no, it doesn't. It's, it's as it is at the moment. So we have anti-buffer blows, and you also have your bandwidth allocation feature. You can just use the bandwidth allocation feature that's always been there as an option if that's all you want to do. So you could give 100% to gaming, and that will work. But it would be very, very powerful. I'd still always recommend just putting on a bit of congestion control. Uh, sorry, anti-buffer bloat. We, we renamed it, which is why I got the name wrong there. So the reason for that is if you are not using all the bandwidth at the time for gaming and something else uses all the bandwidth, let's say someone is using a torrent in your home, because you've set uh, allow bandwidth to be shared automatically, it could eventually max out your connection. So there's always a chance that it could still affect your gaming even though you've allocated it. It's, it doesn't really happen but it's not completely bulletproof. Put the two together and you're bulletproof. So just put a bit of anti-buffer bloat on and then have fun with bandwidth allocation, whichever way you, you want it to happen. That's why we brought Luke here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> he knows everything <laughs> about Doom everything. OS. <laughs> like, uh, uh, Doom OS, you know, I'd love to have you come back as well uh, on, on one of our Friday uh, streams. Uh, you could just kind of hang out for, an, for the first hour uh, and we could do uh, some some uh, Duma OS questions because it's like simple things like that, you know, uh, uh, that you may not know. You you know it inside and out. Um, and so uh, love to have you, you know, definitely come back and and uh, and answer questions. We've only got a few more minutes for for your for your questions. Um, don't forget uh, in the description below, you can sign up for uh, the beta for Duma OS 3.0. And uh, we are going to be announcing when that beta uh, is starting, uh, probably by the end of the week. Is that correct, Luke? Yeah, I think we'll know very soon. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm excited for this. Uh, do I have to sign up for the beta in order to get the Yes. Beta? Yeah, you're bottom of the list. Yeah. Uh, I'm at the, always at the bottom of the list on the beta. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, yeah, this, it, I'm, it's such an exciting, uh, a moment because, you know, uh, we have all been working really hard behind the scenes, uh, to, to make this happen. And it's finally here, you know, all the blood, sweat and tears, uh, you know, and it's exciting to bring it out to the fans because, um, uh, it's really, it's really about changing everybody's gaming experience one gamer at a time. And we, and Luke, you and I have been doing this since CES. God, what was it? 2018. Jeez. Yeah, it was a million years ago. Yeah. <laughs> what a different world. There were these yeah. things called conventions back then. Oh, my God. Yeah. International <laughs> flights. Weird. Human uh, interaction. So, so it's, there it's, you go. it's good that we can bring you over virtually. It's probably cheaper to do this virtually uh, <laughs> than flying. Uh, and we really, you know, thank you guys for all your questions. Yeah. If you have any any more questions, get them in now because if, if we start seeing them in the chat, uh, you know, because we're almost at the top of the hour. Uh, I know that we started just a couple seconds late. Uh, so, uh, is there any final thoughts, Luke? Yeah, What's I mean. So two things. So 3.0 is just the beginning. It's it's not um, like that's where we're done now. That's just the kickstart for where we want to go to next. That's why we renamed it, named it as a whole new version. So any ideas, anything you guys want to see, anything that bugs you about the current software, let us know. We've now got you know the facility to start implementing all these different ideas. And the second thing is, like I said earlier, I really we really do appreciate people being patient for this. We know people want this. Uh, whenever people say, when's it coming out? We always say, oh, it's coming. Because you never want to like do a No Man's Sky, right? And overcommit and then let everyone down. <laughs> Uh-oh. We're here now. The beta, the beta sign-up's open. The beta's obviously starting soon. So really excited to get it out there for you guys and uh, get feedback. Yeah. yeah. I think what's also awesome is, you know, obviously we are excited to release this. But uh, we are even more excited to be bringing it to an engaged and also mutually excited um, audience. This was one of our most successful streams we've ever had. Um, so many of you guys in the comments asking questions. Um, I think this is the most viewers we've ever had. So uh, it's awesome to have you guys coming, asking us questions, being engaged with us. And uh, it just motivates the team to uh, 
So keep at it. Keep at yeah. it. You know? Yeah. And it, and if this is this is a, for, a format that you guys you know really dig, uh, I, I'm sure that uh, the three of us can 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 do this again. You know, um, you know, at least like you know every couple of months or something like that. Just to I know that Luke, you you your time is super precious because you guys are like you know doing all sorts of uh, feature updates. You're not you're not going to like put out three uh, O next week and then just you know, take the next four months off. You guys have. Well, no, we're, we're so already working stuff. on 3.1. 3.1 is already yeah. underway. Yeah. And, 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 and there's some really cool stuff in that, by the way. I'm not just hyping. Well, I am, but I, yeah, it's, yeah. I'm, I'm really excited for 3.1. So yeah, no, so it, there, there's, there's, there's a lot of cool stuff that's coming, and, and we love the support. And, you know, uh, uh, it's, it's only, it's only going to get better for, 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 for all of you gamers out there. You know, and we'd love for you guys to, you know, just spread the word. This this software, these routers, they really do exactly what we say they do. You know, um, when we, uh, I remember, you remember when we first put it out at CES in, in 2018, everybody was like, yeah, right. And then, then uh, uh, in 2019, people were like, what's a Nighthawk Pro gaming router? And now I see on our Twitter feeds and, and others, spaces uh people are are like yeah you need to get one of these so we really appreciate you guys uh for for all the support over the last two years um let's let's see what we can do sign up for that beta uh like and subscribe our channel uh follow us on on social media and uh we'll get back to you guys uh soon um maybe we'll do a recap after the beta and kind of uh let people know um how it went and when they can expect for it to be out in the open. Yeah, there's, yeah. A, there's a lot Let's to talk do. about here. So, uh, you know, when it comes out, we'll be back uh, to hang out with you guys. Um, yeah, any more closing thoughts? I think we're, just uh, any questions that weren't answered, but uh, like relate to the software, just uh, send us a message on Twitter, at NetDuma. Um, uh, one of the guys is online now, so he can reply. There you go. So, at NetDuma on Twitter, I'll have... Uh, uh, the man above, Angelo, uh, comment for us, uh, that Twitter handle, so you guys can, uh, you know, get your last minute questions in, but, uh, yeah, uh, thank you guys so much for tuning I, in, this has been a great stream. Yeah, I have one last thing, we had a, a question come in at the last minute, Angelo, can you drop in the support, uh, thing that we do with the, uh, Netgear live support, James Day, uh, just popped up on the the chat, and he says, "I haven't been able to get my XR five hundred working in about eighteen months." So that is about eighteen months too long. If you haven't talked to us uh, about trying to get it going, what we'll do is, you know, uh, Angelo, if you could drop him that uh, that e email so he could t talk to support, uh, say that you've you know uh, were on this uh, this stream, and James, we'll see if we can we can help you. Other people on the stream are already reaching out to him to see if they can help as well. Um, but that's oh, what this, that's awesome. That's what this this community is all about. That's, that's cool, what yeah. the No Lag Crew is about. Um, and uh, uh, speaking of the No Lag Crew, uh, keep your ears to the ground because we'll be making an announcement about that and sometime soon as well. Um, and uh, I guess uh, uh, on that, I think that's that's kind of wrapping up unless you guys have anything else to say that's been fun thank you for having me on thank you there you go thanks for coming luke he's the expert we're glad he was here and uh we hope we answer all your questions um if you have any other tech support questions you want to ask we'll be back on friday with our usual tech support live stream um that's a, always a, a great time to hang out with you guys so if you need more help um on not just uh npg stuff but all neck your stuff tune in on friday um, same time. It's just a two hour stream. So you get a little bit more time, um, with us. So, um, with that being said, uh, I'm going to end the stream. Uh, you know, one last thank you to all of our viewers. It's always a pleasure to hang out with you guys and, um, we'll see you next time. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye. Guys.